Hello students, Michael Sanchez here with Josh. Hi. Josh has been playing on a three-quarter violin for about, what, about a year and a half or so? Something like that? Two, year and a half to two years. Year and a half to two years, okay. For those of you guys that don't know, a three-quarter size is just a little bit smaller than um, full size. So you can yeah. see this violin is a little bit shorter. So. But now Josh is actually ready for a full size. We actually measured him. Um, earlier today and uh, we have a couple violins here that we're gonna have him try out today so um, Josh is basically looking for something right underneath a thousand dollars kind of an upgrade to what he has now and uh, what you've already played you can tell a big difference right mm -hmm. okay well first let's show you when you can tell when your child is going to be ready for a, a bigger size so go ahead and put your violin up so when the student can stretch their hand all the way around the scroll like Josh is doing right here he's reaching to about there that's actually <laughs> um, the point where he needs a new or bigger size so if, if your student was about here not quite able to reach this far then they wouldn't um, be ready for the next size make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we're going to compare some different sounds today, and as, as you guys can see, if you put your violin kind of next to this, Josh, all these are totally different wood qualities, different sounds. So let's have you play something, Josh. Let's have you play just like a scale on each one. Cheryl, actually, whatever you want to play. Okay. Whatever you're comfortable playing. All right, so that was Josh's violin, his three-quarter size. All right, here comes the full size. We'll call this the, um, the light brown violin. Okay, what do you think? Can you tell the difference? Yes, yeah, definitely what? lower, lower, lower. pitch. Um, as far as lower pitch, do you mean like it's like kind of thicker, like richer, kind of like a bigger, mm -hmm. warmer sound, a little yeah. bit? Yeah. Because I think higher pitch means that it's that, that's not supposed to be higher pitch. <laughs> that that means it's a a viola or something, something mm -hmm. different, right? It's a more rich, sound. richer sound, kind of more pleasant to listen to. Yeah. Okay, because it's a bigger instrument, better wood quality. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's have you play the next one. We'll call this the orange violin. What's the difference between that one and the last one? It's definitely a more, it's a little bit less rich, more of a higher kind of. Um, two things, characteristics of violins is like the richness, the depth of them, mm -hmm. and also how much they project, which kind of deals with how loud they are. So they seem a little bit louder, like it was a little yeah. bit bigger sound? Yeah. Okay. So what do, what do you think you like better? Did you like the more bigger sound or more like kind of richer sound? Um, Bigger. I like this violin the best out of the. Set. You did okay. Yeah. Earlier you said you like that the look of that, the look of that one. So. Well, yeah, but I like the sound of this one. Good. And what is most important, uh, just to let you guys know out there, is definitely you don't want to pick a violin by the look, which is good, Josh. You always want to pick the violin by the sound, how good it sounds underneath your ear. So, definitely a good choice if you like the sound of that one better mm -hmm. and not the, not the look, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, one thing that's really important with trying out a violin is, is not just picking, making a quick decision, right? Not like going to the gas station and picking a candy bar, mm -hmm. right? It's a, it's a big decision. So let's have uh, actually play some stuff on them so you can hear the different sounds. So, um, yeah, go ahead and uh, let's listen to uh, this particular piece.
different sound, isn't it? Yeah, it is. What do you think? What do you like better? That one. You like this one better? Yeah. Okay. I like the sound. So right there I was demonstrating the uh, lower end of the instrument. Now I'm going to demonstrate the upper end, so like the E string. Mm -hmm. Still like this one? Wow, that's three for three. I know. That's a good sign. Yeah. All right, now we have to do one more step in this process. We have to do what's called a blind test, which means you can't actually know which one is which and be biased. Because so far, obviously, it seems like you like that one, right? Mm -hmm. So go ahead and have a seat on the couch, Josh. Actually, turn away from us. All right, now I'm going to play either violin. I'm not going to tell you which one is which. Josh, come back over here. Okay. Okay, so the first violin I played, we'll call it violin A. Second okay. violin I played, violin B. So which one did you think sounded better? I liked violin B. Violin B. That's four for four. <laughs> okay. So typically it doesn't work out that way, just to let you guys know. Sometimes it's like one or the other. So normally what happens when you're trying out violins in like a studio or shop, you have like maybe four or five of them and you decide which one you don't like. So don't always try to pick the one you, you love, just the one you don't like. And then you start doing some of those tests, right? Mm -hmm. So we did a blind test, we did I played it, we did you played it. So four for four is pretty good. I like that so one. That's, I like the sound of it. We know for sure you like this one over this one. Yep. So. Put this I, one away. I like the looks of that one, but I like the sound of that one. Good. And you, and, but you want a violin that's going to sound good, not just look good, right? Yep. Cool. All right. So uh, let me know if you guys have any questions about this uh, violin uh, choosing process. It's definitely something that you may, may have never done before. So uh, email me at rivertownviolin at hotmail.com. Hope you guys have a good day.